Who is Arch for? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's for people who already know that Arch is for them, right? Hello there and welcome to Monday Philosophy. So the reason why I asked this question about who Arch is for is because today I have had uh, a short session with a friend who tried to install Arch and he already knew that he's going to not like it right and everything was pretty much expected but he wanted to give it a shot anyway uh, and one of the reasons was uh, that because I told him to give it a shot. Uh, and I as well knew that uh, he's not going to like it, but all that things aside, I told him to try Arch install. And this is a Python script that basically helps you uh, get through the whole install and it's um, pretty much clickety-click. Uh, so, you know, you, you run the command, you pick your um, keyboard, your uh, kernel, your um, you can tell it to auto-partition everything. Uh, you can uh, choose the packages if you know how to enter the command, but uh, he skipped that part. Uh, and basically in about five or so minutes, uh, he had uh, a working Arch install, right? And by working, I mean uh, the uh, command line login, all right? Uh, so he asked me which uh, desktop environment should he try. And because he already uses KDE uh, Plasma, right? I told him try Cosmic. Uh, and okay, uh, easy enough, sudo uh, pacman-s cosmic installs everything that is required, but because he tried it in a virtual machine, which was VMware, he wasn't sure which graphics card um, background was being used, so he didn't know when the offer came up uh, from Mesa, uh, whether he should uh, select uh, ATI, or Intel or Virtua, uh, Virtua basically for KVM machine. So he just pressed number one for the uh, kind of a default option and that was uh, Radeon, but I think the older one, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and basically once the Cosmic was installed, he started it and it didn't show up on the screen, right? So the way he wanted to try another Mesa driver was to reinstall uh, Cosmic. And that didn't work because Cosmic is not the one who asked about which uh, Mesa driver to use, but rather uh, Mesa package was automatically pulled along with Cosmic. Uh, and, and this is perfectly fine. Uh, but you need to be aware of how things work under the hood. So in order to change your Mesa driver, you really need to go back to the documentation and find a way how to reconfigure Mesa and which which package exactly is taking care of uh, asking you uh, which driver to use. So after some full seven minutes, uh, we were done with both the installation and trying of Arch Linux. And we have already had the conclusion that this operating system sucks. Allow me to skip to a whole another topic for a moment and then we are going to tie them both together uh, in the end. Uh, do you know how most of the uh, Linux utilities work? You, you usually have the command line utility which does the job and then you have the GUI uh, front end, uh, sometimes in GTK, sometimes in Qt, uh, sometimes it's deeply integrated into GNOME, sometimes it's deeply integrated into KDE. Uh, or Cinnamon or whatever, uh, but usually you have some underlying command line uh, utility that actually does the heavy lifting, the, which, which actually does uh, what you are trying to do. Uh, be it, for example, the old school CD burning or partitioning something, usually all, you always have some kind of uh, CLI tool which uh, does the main job, right? And why I'm saying this, because there is always two ways to do things, from the command line or from GUI. In Windows, it usually uh, has been always like uh, from the GUI only, and recently they started adding uh, more and more command line options. But in Linux, it was the always the other way around. You always had CLI utilities for everything and GUI for some things, but not for everything. Uh, in my opinion, we should really stay on this course and offer people the option to use GUI 
about the underlying arch architecture, under underlying tools that do all the job should always stay as command line options because these are uh, very practical. You can access them via remote uh, SSH session and advanced users love it and beginners always want to use GUI. So the way that things should work is that we should remain having both of these options uh, as we already do. And I'm not even suggesting that Linux is straying away from this path. I'm just saying that this is good. This is good what we already have. And the, the reason why I'm building up the, the whole topic here is because a lot of new users that we actually want to to get on on board into our ecosystem because uh, more users equals uh, more drivers equals more hardware support equals more software equals more opportunities and all that brings even more new users right uh, so this is th this thing spin in circle right most new users want things that just work they expect to click next 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 during the installer uh, maybe uh, use the slider to, to repartition the Windows partition if they want to dual boot and tell the um, Linux installer whichever distro they are using uh, to just you know resize the Windows to a smaller one and put Linux here and not worry about what grub is uh, and what kind of bootloader other uh, options are there uh, and you know all, all these things. A friend of mine recently installed Ubuntu and he uses Teams for work and recently he uh, got a little bit angry because Teams stopped working, not completely, like some of the functions stopped working, maybe desktop sharing or, or something along those lines. And he was a little bit mad uh, on Linux, at Linux, uh, but it turned out that it was actually Microsoft's fault and Microsoft broke uh, this functionality on Linux. It, it wasn't actually the fault of the... Uh, anything, any component uh, on Linux and thankfully enough uh, he was having a cool enough head to discover this answer uh, on his own but nevertheless uh, it, it was a little bit problematic for him because he actually need, needs this uh, feature for uh, uh, for his work. So your approach to this uh, problem as a solution might be like don't use Microsoft products. Why would you use that on Linux, right? It's a, it's a, this is a valid uh, way of thinking, right, on Linux. However, if we want to pressure Microsoft to do better on Linux. We need more users. We need to have the angle from Microsoft to, to see Linux as something that they need to invest more effort in and not create problems where there shouldn't be any, right? So we are where we are, right? Another friend told me that he wouldn't like to see Linux desktop usage grow like beyond 10%. Like he would like to see Linux stay as a small-ish community and whether I agree with this or not the fact that 10% is a pretty good percentage and we are getting closer to where Mac is right and Mac is uh, enjoying a lot of software support so I'm not sure entirely but I think Mac is like around 15% let me look that up quickly yeah, I got that right. So Mac is around 15% uh, in, in the entire world and they are getting a lot of software support due to uh, being that big. And big is like under quotation mark because compared to Windows, this is a rather small uh, percentage, but Linux is um, kind of a, trying to reach 5% now, uh, but we are still not there yet. And the reason why I put these two topics on the table, like uh, who is Arch Linux for and how are Linux tools uh, supposed to be or, or already are designed, right? I want to see more Linux enthusiasts recommending easy Linux distribution to new users like Zorin or Ubuntu. And yes, I said Ubuntu, no matter it's coming from a huge company it's it's a private company right until they uh, become like a publicly traded company and uh, start depending on shareholders i think they're fine so there you have it when your next friend asks you for help to get them on board linux uh, give them something easy give them flat packs and be there for them i'm gonna see you next video
Thank you.